Hey everyone, welcome to my video, how to play Golf Clash with Notebook for Golf Clash. This video is here to teach you about this app, exactly what it is, how to set it up, how to use it in gameplay. And it's really for everyone who might be new to the concept. And it's also for those people who have been using the wind ring adjustment system manually with, you know, graphs and charts and calculators. And you want to step up to the app and you might be a little bit intimidated. I'm here to show you how easy it is and how it can improve your scores and make the game of Golf Clash much more fun. And I know I talked about the wind ring adjustment system. I just want to let you know I do have a video for that already on the channel under my my tutorial section. I'll link that in the description of this video in case you want to learn more. We do talk a little bit about Notebook in that video, but I want to get into the app. So check out the links and give yourself a little bit more detailed information about the entire system. But this video is really about the app and how we use it in gameplay. So enough talk. Let's start tappity tapping here. This is, as you can see at the top of the app screen, Notebook for Golf Clash. And there's just these seven little options and some of them are completely irrelevant. I'm going to skip over the wind assist and the bag setup just briefly. Those are the two primary functions. I want you to know that the tournament and the course sections are basically expired. Go to www.golfclashtommy.com. He's an incredible human with an incredible web page that's focused around Golf Clash. And it's going to give you all the course and tournament information you're ever going to need. Um, the needle trainer, this one here, we'll just show this right away. This is just a little practice tool that allows you to play around without actually playing. And you can kind of practice. You can change the club that you're using. You can change which tour you're playing, which ball you're hitting. So it'll actually try to recreate how it plays in the game. It does have a little disclaimer. That's not the primary function of this app. There's a couple of tiny little settings about syncing it. Okay, no big deal. The help button is interesting and i would actually recommend that you take some time and look through it there's some really good information here about the wind ring system how we make these elevation changes but this is sort of the long form of what i want to show you in a very brief moment all right so wind assist here is the primary screen that you're going to be using while you play the game when i give you the gameplay example for this main screen I'm going to show you how I personally play it on an iPad so that I have this information overlaid over my game while I'm playing. But you could use this on a secondary device. You could use this on a computer with the BlueStacks emulator and, you know, play it that way. There's a lot of different setups you can use. So don't hesitate to play around with that and work with the equipment that you have and, you know, the level of technical expertise that you are used to. So bag setup is actually where you want to begin. And as you can see, when I click this little drop down menu, I have a setup for each of my different accounts. I have them in order that works for me and it's going to be customized for you. So we're going to start and create a brand new bag. And I'm going to click on that little green plus button there. You see how we can enter the bag name. So this is going to be the video account. Okay. And we're going to copy it from a fresh bag. You could copy an existing account if you want it, but I'm going to start with the fresh bag. And I recommend that if it's your first time, uh, that's what you do. And right away, as you can see, we now have seven clubs that are all level one brand new beginner. Now I'm not going to spend a bunch of time, but you know, setting up a fake account. But what you need to know is that you can click on each of the clubs under each of the sections, the drivers, the woods, the long irons, and you're going to recreate the clubs that you have in your bag. So for example, you might have, and I'm clicking right on the little blue number one or that gold number one or that, that's well, kind of a pink number one. And I'm changing the level to match the level of the clubs in your bag. Let's say you have a level 10 rocket. Maybe you have a level seven extra mile, a level five big topper. Okay, no big deal. We've got a Viper level seven and a big dog, dog level five, right? So I think you get the concept. And then at the top, I'm gonna choose the club that fits my bag so the long iron maybe i've got a backbone level six and we're going to select that as our active club uh maybe you choose to use the hornet and you've got a hornet level four and you're a rapier player no judgment i still love you too and you're going to select that down to your rough iron you better be using that nirvana malibu or how about we go for the spitfire and essentially there is even the golden shots 
this is one of the for the fixed club tournament you can use this app with that as well so that's a very very helpful feature but as you can see at the top here i've got my big topper big dog backbone hornet rapier nirvana spitfire bag all set up now that might be the main bag that you use in your account and obviously these aren't primary clubs that you would use in the game but this is just an example so we're going to leave the bag setup section and i want you to head back over to where it says wind assist and now you can see with the little drop down menu i've got my main account that has my level 7 thor's hammer and sniper 10 and all that good stuff and now we've got our new video bag and these clubs match exactly the clubs that we have just set up so this is the preliminary steps that you need to take before you even start playing there's a little bit of setup that goes into it, but it's really just a couple of minutes. Okay, now, just to kind of talk a little bit about what it is exactly that we're looking at. It seems very clear to me that when you tap on the clubs, you can change which club you're using. And if you had them set up in the setup section, you can change to them. You know, we can go to level one, we can use this, all the different clubs. You can change them on the fly as you're playing, which to me is a great feature. You know, you might switch from your big topper bag to your extra mob bag you'll see me do this frequently during live play if you catch me during my stream um, but that's just the club part of it now an interesting point if you tap on the numbers on the side it allows you to really focus in on that information because you're going back and forth between the game and the app that takes practice don't get frustrated just keep playing and this little green highlighted section allows you when you glance back over to know exactly where you're looking at right and just while we're tapped on this zero zero information, what you're looking at, the top number is the maximum club distance. The middle number is mid club. And that bottom number would be the minimum club distance. So for example, and as you can see on the bottom section, we have a 0.0, .0 mile per hour wind. Let's input a 1.0 mile per hour wind into the game. We're still gonna use the power ball indicator here which is going to change the numbers you see however but at a very basic setup here you see with our level 7 extra mile and a 1.0 mile per hour wind if we're adjusting at maximum distance for that driver we're going to pull 0.5 rings right so i hope you can see that and now the other factors that are playing into that it's the power of the ball so let's if we change this to a power three or to a power four see how it went up to 0.6 or power 5 at this level of wind we're not going to see massive changes but if we have a wind of 15.8 and we change our power ball setting from a zero to a power three you'll see how the numbers are going to alter the number of rings that you have to pull based on the equipment that you have set up in the app so it's important that you understand the basic sections here now what the two parts that i haven't touched on yet is the part you see that has the 10 percent that is the elevation now you'll hear people say i played that shot at 10 percent max what does that mean 10 percent max well let's pick another arbitrary wind how about 10.0 we've got 10 mile an hour wind and we're playing with a power three ball power three ball now maybe we'll play a power four ball we're going to step it up a little bit 10 percent maximum distance and that means we would make a 5.6 ring adjustment. That's maximum distance. If we're playing that club with the power four ball at mid distance with 10% elevation, we're gonna play a 5.0 ring adjustment. Now, on the right-hand side, the last aspect that I haven't touched upon, this is what we refer to as the slider. Now you'll notice right away that when I move that slider all the way from zero right to 100%, only the middle number changes. So what this is doing is allowing us to calculate those distances between mid and max or between min and mid. Because what if you, when you estimate the distance of your club, now let's say we're, we're playing with a long iron here and we've got our backbone and we know that it's about a 10% elevation. So we'll play it at 10% and we're playing with our power three ball. You know, you love that kingmaker. The wind is, is six point eight and you say to yourself well the club is not at max it's not at mid so it's somewhere between 3.7 and 4.2 so mid 50 percent slider represents 3.7 on the wind ring adjustment pull 
if you have determined that you're actually at, say, three quarters distance, that would be approximately 75%, this allows you to change more specifically, more granularly, the distance of your club and how many rings you're going to pull in relation to it. And that is one of the real big magic aspects of using the app magic, also known as math. Instead of having to do that math on the fly, you now have a quick calculation system to put together each of those golf class shot adjustment variables that we use. And again, we talk about these concepts in my win ring adjustment video. You're going to hear most of the golf class streamers talking about these concepts and using this in play. So in play, I'm going to switch to now some gameplay and we're going to walk through a couple of shots and give you an idea of how you can use this to your advantage in actual play. All right, so here we are on my main account. You know what a Golf Clash account looks like. That's not what this is about. But I just want you to see the bag that I have. Thor 7, Sniper 10, Goliath 8. We go into the app. Now you say, whoa, wait a minute. How did you get that to slide over like that? Where does that come from? I'm playing on an iPad 11, iPad Pro 11 inch. This is a feature that's built directly into Apple, into the um, iPad the iPad operating system. So I have another video on my channel that explains how to set that up, how to use it, and how to put that into, into your play. I'll have that linked in the description as well. So go ahead and check that out if you're an iPad user. This won't work on an iPhone. And if you're using an Android-based system, you don't need to worry about that because the Notebook for Golf Clash app is going to automatically overlay over your game, and you don't really need to do anything extra for that. So I won't have a video specifically for the Android devices. I don't own one, but the concepts of how we use the app don't change. Just slightly the interface would be different for you. So I just want you to see that I have the same clubs. We're going to change in the app at the top where it says video. I'm going to drop, click that drop down menu and I'm changing accounts to my main. And now you can see that I have the Thors, the Sniper, the Goliath and all the same clubs here that we're going to play with for the ease of use and because I'm cheap I'm going to change my powerball setting to level one this is one of the first points of how you can become better with using the app during live gameplay try to set up as much as you can prior to taking the shot so of course in tournament play when you know what's ahead of you that's even easier but in tour play as well you get to know the courses and you get to know how the shots are played and you can think ahead okay the next shot i'm going to play it with a sniper i know i'm going to play it at 10 percent so then you can go in you can change it to your to your elevation change it to your club so that when the shot happens you just have to put the wind in so speaking of shot let's go in we're going to play right now live together win or lose baby let's go through and let's play a match to get an idea of how i try to put this app into practice in my play i'm not absolutely perfect i'm still learning and developing my strategy but i can honestly tell you um, that it has increased my win rate since i've used this system exponentially it's given me a feeling of control and given me the feeling that i have the tools at my disposal to achieve the outcome i want to achieve so obviously we've got this nice long hole here and you're going to see whatever you're going to see with my opponent here i support all kinds of gameplay but this method is here for people who want to try to achieve a higher degree of accuracy so what do we know about this hole already well we know we can play it from the left and there's some kind of slope um, on the green and one of my viewers was reminding me that i should try this method in in live play so maybe we will go left side and i also know that on the right hand side there's a play that we can use a long iron and try to get it down to the hole so this isn't about the hole it's about thinking about the app so I'm going to play on the left side. I'm going to use my Thor's hammer. I'm going to play with the power one ball. And I know from practice and from learning from trial and error and from people like Golf Clash Tommy that I'm going to play about a 10% downhill elevation on this drive. So we're going to set it up at max. We're going to give it our top spin and all that. And we say to ourselves, all right, that looks about good. Now the wind, the wind is 9.9. .9. So you go into your app, you're going to go 9.9, nine, nine. it's 9.9. .9. You can see at maximum distance, and we are at maximum distance, we would pull 9.3 rings. If we were at min distance, we'd pull 7.3. 
So I better hurry up. I'll pull my 9.3 rings. I don't even have my grid set up. That's okay. We'll just use the take shot button. 9.3. Roughly a little bit of an over pull there, but you know how it is. Tour play. No big deal. We get it down the middle with a <clears throat> great ball. Um, but you see how the app did the calculation for me and allowed me to know precisely how many rings I needed to pull. And instead of ending up in one of the hazards or putting myself in a detrimental position, now we have ourselves an opportunity for a nice second shot. Now, second shot then, how am I going to play it? I don't know this left side very well. It might be a downhill, which meaning I would have to add elevation, 20, 30, 40%. As you can see, as I add elevation, the amount of rings that I have to pull goes up 11, 12, 13. I'm going to estimate that into this 5.9 mile, well, my wind will be different because my power ball is different. My wind resistance on my ball is different. I might need to play, say, 15% elevation. So I'm going to add a little bit of elevation. I believe I'm in long iron range. And I get the app ready before I get going into the shot. I have it up. I have it ready. The ball, the club, the elevation, and the slider. So let's take a look at where we are in our club distance. So there's max. Right? There's min. Mid would be about here. But I want to play it about here. So I'm going to go ahead and change my slider to about, let's say, 30% or so. 8.4, 30% slider is going to give me a 3.9 ring pull. So I'm aimed at the hole reasonably well. And let's try approximately 3.9. Oops, I'm going to go this way. Just about there. I know this isn't the funnel I talked about, but it's demonstrating the concept of the slider. And look how close we come here. Now, ooh, we might have over pulled a little bit. 15% might have been a bit zealous. So you see how we can see we missed to the left of the pin and we pulled 3.9 rings. So then we can look at the app post shot and analyze what we could have done differently. I'd say I needed to pull less rings, and we did pull 3.9. If we had changed the elevation from 15 and actually played only 10, the app would have indicated a pull of 3.7. I think that might have still been a little bit too much. 5%, 0% would give us less and less yet. There's also methods to be more accurate in your calculation of where the slider you would be, sometimes based on drive yardage or something of the matter. So. I hope this demonstrates to you how instead of having a chart and a physical calculator and maybe three or four other assistive devices around you, this quick, simple little app is going to give us the opportunity. Uh, I'm actually going to let the opponent have a chance to take it to a draw with us because I want to just play it one more time through with you on the par three. Now, I don't know what par three is coming, obviously, but I think that it might be a sniper shot. It might be either 10 or 20 percent and i'm ready to go i've got my app ready to go that's a good practice to get into if you watch my live play in tournaments you'll see that's what i do all the time even if i'm chatting a lot or having fun with the chat i always want to make sure that i've got that app ready to go so we give ourselves a chance here to take it to the shootout even though yeah i could have had a free win in tour nine i know learning is important and I'm willing to, to put it on the line and see if we can't come through with a win. Win or lose, you're going to see this on YouTube. If you're still watching, thank you very much. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Always putting out best Golf Clash content I can. And I'm always interested in your feedback, good, bad, or otherwise. So let's see what we got here. There's Max. I'm literally winging it here with you. We're about like 40, 50%. I'm going to leave it as it is. There's a nice little roll back here. So I'm going to play this at mid distance. 11.5 mid distance at 10% elevation with the power one ball is 11.1. .1, excuse me. I almost used the wrong club. 9.6 rings with this Thor's hammer. So let's try here about 9.6 ish. I think that's pretty close to being right. Oh, great ball isn't going to help anybody. It's okay. You saw how it could have been, should have win. We had that victory, but I took this effort for the team. But you see now how I hit a little bit great left, and we just missed a little bit great left. 
even estimating the numbers and knowing 10% roughly, maybe 15 was the number, it gives you the chance to dial these shots so much closer than just guessing or just kind of winging it, you know. And it's fine if, if that's how you want to play the game. Why you watch this video? I think this is the kind of thing for people who have really gotten to the point where you know you've maxed out your talent at a certain level and you're really trying to elevate your game higher and higher. Well, I might not be, you know, a high level expert or master player. These are the exact same concepts that these higher level players are using. And now see how our opponent does. It doesn't look like they're doing anything super exacting. No offense, fair game, but I think that gives us an upper edge. And I think that's what you're looking for is you want to win more games, win more banners. And that's what I want you to do. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope we take the win here in the shootout. I'm going to hold on to it. Even with the great ball, baby, we'll take that dub. We gave him a chance to win, and we're still going for victory. That's what it's all about right there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment. Tell me what you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching.